This story started back in 2020 when those 12 foot skeletons came out. My kid wanted one, but I was not about to spend $300 on a Halloween decoration. Since then, I've reviewed a lot of 3D printers. Printers that often come with a complementary spool of white filament. I hate white filament. It's horrible to photograph properly, and it usually hides imperfections. So what do you do with 10 rolls of filament that you don't have a use for? You go big. I did the math and a 15 foot skeleton was out of the question, but life-sized? Sure. I happened to be testing a large format 3D printer at the time, the Inicubic Cobra 2 Max, which has a whopping 420 by 420 build plate. And it got me thinking, I could actually pull this off. Between the Cobra 2 Max and the K1 Max and all my regular size printers, I could have a life-size Scully done in about a week. Scully is an action figure you can find inside Tinkercad. I've done a little poking around and he seems to be a holdover from a line of toys dubbed Tinker Play, which may or may not have been bought up by Mattel for a failed to launch 3D printer called the Thing Maker around 2016. Yes, that thing maker from the 60s your boomer relatives used to make bugs from goo. The 60s were weird. Anyway, I digress. If you type skeleton in Tinkercad, you'll find this little dude with a scary face. I swapped his head out with Scully from Thingiverse. I'll link the file below. Scully is about 8 inches tall, 180 millimeters, when printed at 100%. He's the perfect size for a Halloween catapult. Now the question was, how big can I print this skeleton? I had two main constraints, the size of my printers and the amount of filament I had. So I fired up Kira, did some scaling and aimed for a six foot tall skeleton. But that was well over 12 spools and I only had 10, give or take. So after some quick math, I settled for a perfectly life size five foot Scully. Considering I'm 5'2", he's a great match. <laughs> 3D printing a toy at 900% has a few challenges. The joints are difficult enough at normal size and didn't always work when scaled up really huge. And printing something really big on a high-speed printer takes finesse and sometimes tape. Look, this isn't a cosplay how-to. If you want to learn about sanding and painting, go check out Frankly Built. This build is about using up leftovers, Tinkercad, and a good amount of glue. I think it needs more of that. This project, uh, I don't think you can have enough. There were a few failures, but thankfully only two reprints. And of course, those reprints put me off my filament budget, and I had to go back to Micro Center for more white. So far, I'd used about 9,300 grams of mostly free filament from sample rolls and leftovers that have been piling up in the corners of my workroom for the last couple of years. We cracked a leg joint beyond even 3D Gloop's ability to mend it and needed more filament. We're lucky enough to live 20 minutes from Micro Center and popped out for a few rolls with Spoolless PLA to finish the job. Scully got a few accessories, a nice hat, a little paint, and a giant clock spring treasure chest to hold treats for the kids which is also 3D printed, of course. He traveled to a 3D printing festival with us and after a quick costume change, went camping with my son where he helped demonstrate tool safety. Scully is bound to have a few more adventures before Halloween. I'd love to take him to a pumpkin patch. So please subscribe and I'll post a few shorts to keep you updated. After Halloween, I'm not sure where he'll turn up next. So stay tuned. If you want to make your own life-size Tinkercad skeleton, I have to warn you, it wasn't easy and it's not cheap. I tried to modify his files a little bit to make joints fit better, but I'm a journalist, not a designer, and we still ended up cracking a few parts. But Scully wasn't about perfection. He was about making something fun.